Okay. I want to what I want to do is I have um chess, a chess tournament setting dialog for arena. Uh, let's see what version of arena I got. Okay, I've got arena 3.5. Okay, in the engines um tournament I want to show how to set up a tournament. So I have two homebrew engines in here. And the, the it's set up for Gauntlet, which um, really what's going to happen in a Gauntlet is this first engine is going to play against all of the engines that I add as competitors below it. If I say I want this engine to be the Gauntlet tier, I would move it up to the top. So then um, say I want to add another engine, I could add one of these that I have added to the um, configuration file. And I'll show you how to do that in just a sec. So say I wanted to add the latest version of Stockfish that's competing right now on TCEC. I could add that over here. It's probably 3,500. Okay. So anyway, I could do that um, uh, if I wanted, and then I could move this up, and we could run a gauntlet against Stockfish. So anyway, that. Um, that's how you set the opponents in here and if you want to take one of these out you use this arrow to take one out so I, I could take I could take stockfish back out with this arrow so then um, I could um, set the the level and so right now it's set for blitz I set the base minutes for 120 which is two hours and then the bonus I set at 15 to match up with what TCEC has for a long time control. And you can also do um, a term, tournament time controls. Um, so many moves in a minute. Um, there's a lot of ways you can set this up. Um, you can search a certain amount of nodes if the engine supports that. Infinite search. Um, mate search, all kinds of different things, but I don't I don't use most of these. I I mainly just use the tournament or the blitz. Um, so just okay that. Um, and when you're setting up a tournament, you you um you 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 actually you have to name the tournament, and then you um if you want to um preserve all the settings you can duplicate it and create a new name when you duplicate it so that the next time you run a tournament you don't have to do all these things you just you just duplicate it and rename it a little bit you know like like this one here I could say okay long time control test two oops long time control test two Okay, that now I got a new I got a new tournament. It's going to create a new tournament file, and when I start, it'll start from the beginning. Play play as many rounds as I tell it. Um, and all oh, and also I should point out this carousel. I believe that what that does is it repeats the games like. Um, like if I'm in if I'm in round robin and I check the carousel, um, it's going to repeat the games. Like the first game, the opening is it's going to play an opening from a file, and then it's going to repeat that and play the um, switch the players and they'll play the same opening with re with their colors reversed. So next. Um, and that's what one thing we need to look at the options this is the file this is the openings file I was just talking about it's uh 
H. Shap, sweet. I think that's Harry Shap. I'm not really sure. It's a file I downloaded from the web. It has um, 440 openings in it in a PGN format. And so because they're in a PGN format, it'll load it'll load those openings. It'll set up the position on the board. Um that's in that, that's in this um and you can um just tell it how many moves to load if it's a PGN file. Um if it's an EPD file it'll load the um, position. If it's a PGN file, it'll load the first eight moves. Um, you can change that though to any number. Just You just want to make sure it has that many moves per opening. And then um, right here, repeat start position with color, uh, switch colors. Probably want to check that. Um, you can also set your adjudication in here. Um, I have adjudicated loss below minus 1100. That kind of kind of lets them play on, even though they're they're pretty lost. You could set this to say a minus 900 or something down a queen. Um, also, it'll draw when 250 moves are played, or it'll adjudicate a. a Early draw when 999 moves are played, and a value of zero. You can you can play around with these and set these. I think the reason I set it at 999 is because I don't want this to happen, because it was failing to work for me. And then there's also the ability to adjudicate with table bases, which um, is another um, it's another setting, another tab up here to set the, where the table bases are. I don't remember what the auto flag is. Oh, the auto rotate board is cool because, say, um, say you have a favorite engine, it'll put it down at the bottom and playing up, which is kind of cool. So, and I, 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 don't, I never play anything but normal chess on here. But you could, there's a couple of variants you could try if you're interested. Okay, and then there's the here's the files where the um where it's gonna save um games and where it's gonna get your, your here's your log file. You can tell it where to store your log file. Um you can tell it, um where to save your HTML results, your tournament table results, um and this one here is the PGN output file basically the output file for the tournament and this is the information about that could appear in your ELO or your HTML result file that you can you can bring up in your browser um, so this this is where you see like the pairings that are that are in progress um, you can have the um, engines restart after every game. That's um, that's handy if you have an engine that's misbehaving, and so you want it to restart. You you also you're also giving some time for your processor to cool a bit. Um, I wouldn't go so far as to shutting down the computer on every tournament, but some people might want to do that so that's available. And on the blunder check, this is the cool thing. This this is sort of like if you're working on an engine and it makes a blunder, it'll save, depending on these parameters, it'll save the position into a file. And I'm not sure what the critical position thing is. Um, somewhere in here, I didn't see the um, the table base. That must be a different um, location here. Uh, options. 
or here, options configure table bases. This is something that you want you want to do. You want to download um, the the Javadi table base. Um, Javada, however it's pronounced. Um, so that Arena can use it to adjudicate the games. Um, and if your engine supports these, they can use the, the table bases too. So this is where I have them located. Um, so that's where you set that up. So anyways, um, you can have, um, you can manage opening books for an engine if you want. Um, I don't do that. I let the um, tournament play the opening book, the openings from the um, the file setting here. Um, on the options here, right here, plays the opening from this. Um, and then as far as far as um, these are interfaces concerned. Um, this has some um, things that you can do. You can um, the multi PB didn't seem to work for me during the game. I don't know if this feature works on this version of the program. It didn't seem to work for me while it was in game, and I don't know what it looks like. Um, but that would be a nice feature if it worked. Um, there's there's a lot of stuff here. Um, you just have to um, play around with it. Um, but you don't need you actually don't need to do anything with this stuff um, if you're happy with what, what the defaults are. You can move some of this stuff around and resize it. This is where your output for your engine appears down here. I think you can go um, side by side. Uh, somewhere in one of these um, settings. So um, I think I think it'd be cool right now though to show you what it looks like when it's running. Um, so so it loaded up both engines and this one started searching. This one here is just kind of sitting idle till the first one searches. Now this engine here, Gangbuster 3.0 CP has a problem where it doesn't use, it doesn't handle this time control. That's why I like this time control because my my engine that I'm developing it's it's probably around 2100 to 2200 somewhere in that range. It's it handles this full long time control but my opponents uh, my nephew this engine doesn't handle this time control and so it's the only time control I can beat him on and so that's why I like it. <laughs> so, so here, oh, down here you can see the um, the HS suite. It shows you um, the this will pop up on you sometimes. I just I just shrink it down, and you might see a little box down here sometimes. So I guess that covers the um, the tournament aspect of it, but. Um, Let's cancel this for now. I didn't show you how to add an engine because adding an engine, what you do is you go in the engines and do it install engine, and then you browse around. You browse around with the regular Windows um, file browser, and that's how I added this one in. And and so then, once you get in there, you can go in the manage engine. 
um, look on the details, select it. Um, I got quite a few in here. Uh, say stockfish. Stockfish. It's not a actually. Actually, that's not the latest stockfish, is it? Six. Not really sure if I have that in here now. Maybe I don't. But anyway, um, yeah, right here. See, so you have the the author and the type as UCI and um, this country could be. I'm not really sure what the country is, but you can get that. Um, if there's any command line parameters you want to set, you can do it here. Um, any special book, or any, yeah, any special book or arena book you want to put in. Any special um, in a string can put in here. Um, you know, you can put in the um, image somewhere in here, the logo file, if you want the logo file for the program. Um, um, so, uh, if a program has a README, you can um, set that up and, and look at it. Um, you can, yeah, you can put in whatever features it supports. I don't know if this works for UCI. Yeah. Um. And, and then after you get this all set up, you can um, you can actually yeah you can actually load the engine and and have it in the GUI. Um. And you can uh, you gotta you gotta um, s apply the changes that you make down here. And then you can um, you can load the, you can load these engines into the GUI um, uh, over here. You can add the engine in over here. This shows you the engines that are loaded right now, left over from that tournament. So um, these are all oh, these are options for all. UCI engines, and these are options for all windboard engines. So, um, if I had a if I had a nail move, nail mob uh, table base, that's where it would be. But I don't have that. I don't have this. I only have th this one. But I could do, I could probably do um, another table base um, in here. But I don't think it would use one of the others. So, uh, I don't really know how you connect these other others to. I'm thinking says G how you connect the others to an en a particular engine, but there might be a way to do that. Um, maybe through a command line parameter or something. Um, yeah, see right here, you can start this engine right now if you want. So, if I wanted to start this engine right now, I could click on it and it would go into the. Um, Probably engine um, one. Um, you can. It doesn't really tell you which engine is engine one, and which one is engine two. That's kind of a, a weak point. I would imagine though, if this is one, that's two. What it says on the the top title bar. So anyway. Um, I guess that that about covers everything that you do to to install an engine and run a tournament. So have fun.